Hey guys, Justin here with Jay Hart Model Works. In this video, we're going to be doing a very brief update on the Mustang. We're going to be doing a bit of a stash ad because I did have a couple of things come in and then we're going to take a look at the garage diorama because we have had some really cool progress on that. Alright guys, bench update on the Mustang, <laughs> it is incredibly brief. Realistically, the Mustang is exactly where it was at the end of the last week's video where you guys saw it. Everything is painted up now. All the remaining parts have been painted and are ready to go. All the chrome has been stripped and has been repainted in Drillum and Tough. I love this paint. You can only get it on Etsy from uh, Digital Armory's website, but this is a really nice chrome. It's a little darker, it's not that super bright, bright uh, chrome, but if you put it over a really nice high gloss base, you get a really rich chrome out of it. Kind of a, a little bit darker, not quite black chrome, like Alclad's black chrome, but it's a really nice color and it's pretty resilient to handling. So everything was painted up, everything was set up to dry. I put my parts on a cat scratching pad. This is what I use to haul parts with. Cheap as dirt, get them out of PetSmart, Amazon, whatever, and your little part sticks with the little alligator clips just go straight in the holes. You can put a whole bunch of parts on them. So I had the parts up there on the cat scratching pad. They had dried up. I had had a sinus headache for like two days. It was 9.30 at night. I was like, I'm gonna take some meds and I'm gonna go to bed early. I never go to bed early. I, go, I normally go to bed around 11, 12 o'clock and then I get up early in the morning to get up and go to work. Uh, but this time I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go to bed early. And then I looked over at the parts and I'm like, you know, I should probably take all those parts off the, the sticks and get them back in the project box so nothing gets lost. In the process, I lose one of the freaking headlight buckets. I then have an anxiety attack because I've lost it. I can't find it anywhere. I go and I look around online. I'm pretty sure I could get replacements off of eBay, but I would have to buy the entire chrome sprue. Uh, the listing I saw I think was about 10 bucks plus another $10 in shipping. I'm not paying 20 bucks for an entire chrome sprue when I just want one headlight bucket. Um, so I sit there with a pair of digital calipers and the one remaining headlight bucket for like until 1130 at night. Uh, sitting there just designing and, and 3D modeling up replacement headlight buckets set them up got them on the printer and finally around 11 30 I, I went to bed it was <laughs> i shouldn't have even bothered but everything is currently painted everything is chromed up everything is ready to go i just need to sit down and actually do the recording and the building for the last segment so hopefully i will get that done this weekend and we'll have that video out either next Saturday I'm hoping but don't hold me to that because it may not happen depending on how long it takes me to edit or the Saturday after but when I do I'm just gonna do the build part into the video and maybe I'll show it a little bit after it's finished being built but I think for the full-on reveal video I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna do that as a uh, Sunday model cars and coffee uh, hosted by Paul over at Left Coast Model Customs. Um, that seems like a really great place to showcase like the full of a finished build. So I think that's what I'm going to do with that. Uh, other than that, it's all just been my brain is still not letting go of the garage diorama. Tons of progress has been done. It's all little, well, it's not really all little stuff. But we'll go ahead and we're going to talk about the stash ads and then we will go out and take a look at the garage. 
All right, guys, so on to the stash ads. We got a couple of things in, and honestly, they're things that I had pre-orders on, and I had completely forgotten that I had pre-orders on them. Uh, one of them was announced by Tamiya months ago, like beginning of the year, and I had placed a pre-order on it when they announced it, and it was supposed to have come out, I think, in like May or June, and it never came out. Well, it showed up on my doorstep. Uh, the other one I've been waiting on from Ravel for quite a while. I also had a pre-order out on it and then just completely forgot about it. I actually almost went and ordered it again when I saw people were getting this kit and I didn't. I was like, well, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of wait a little bit given how things are right now. And then this one showed up as well and I was like, oh, oh, I pre-ordered that too. So... The first one is Tamiya's Nissan Fairlady 240Z. And I can already tell you that this is a great kit. How can I tell you this is a great kit? Because for the most part, this kit is the exact same car that they released a while back. Me and Sean did the a buddy build on it. We did the ZG. And the main difference is just the front end. The ZG has a pointed nose and a different front lip compared to this one on top of that the zg at the time it now has one but at the time there was not a street custom version there was just the standard version that had the big standard air box and i had customized mine and turned it into the street custom version with the i made my own um strut brace i made my own air funnels for the carbs I custom did a bunch of the, the engine bay work. I added in a uh, sump, which I don't think is actually in the street custom version, but I added in an a oil sump and I, or an oil catch can. So I did a bunch of custom work in there, but a lot of the custom work that I did is stuff that they put into the street custom version. Uh, not the Watanabe's though, and probably I won't use the Watanabe's on this one either. I'm just not a fan. I may use them, but um, I think I put some Vossens on the ZG. We'll see what happens with it. I'm looking at either a candy blue or a candy green. I got some plans. We'll see when we get there. It'll be a while though. The other stash ad is the new Ravel C8 Corvette which this is looks to be a really good build. I've seen some people do the videos on it, and uh, they're saying it's a pretty good kit as well. I really like the new C8 Corvette. It's kind of one of those you love it or hate it type deals, I guess. Like there's like old school Corvette guys don't like it because it's mid-engine, and yeah, I don't know. I like it. It does kind of look like they ripped off some Lamborghini Aventador here and there, but, you know... That's okay. It still looks really cool, and it's a convertible. So they say it's a coupe, but the top removes. So to me, that's when they've got a convertible and they've got a coupe, and the top comes off both of them. That makes no sense to me. Your coupe is a hard top. The convertible comes off, but whatever. So that's going to be a wrap on the stash ads because that's all I've really got in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and head into the garage and take a look at the garage diorama. All right, guys, shaky can time. We're out in the garage. I am sorry about the air conditioner noise, but it is 1030 at night right now, and it is still 93 degrees in the garage. It's pretty much just as bad outside. That air conditioner is pretty much going to be running probably nonstop. I'll be surprised if it, if it does shut off. It won't shut off for long. It just is what it is. So let's go ahead and move on to... Looking into the garage, as you can see, we've got some stuff going on in here. Uh, not much has gone on over in the lounge area, other than the fact that we have all of our air conditioning done. The, this is a fully modular 3D modeled AC duct system. I have various types of 90s, I have various types of elbows. Um, everything is designed so that you can print out in pieces and kind of glue it all together. There are little vent slats right there. 
we'll take a look at a few of the pieces here. So basically, the core is this piece right here. So you have a flat side and you have your little bent side as if it's sheet metal that have been put through a handbrake and bent. And then you have kind of some a little lip in here. And it's designed so that the small lip fits into the big lip. So basically everything just kind of tucks in. So you basically put these face out unless you want to do a grill. So you put that flat. Then you take one of these grill pieces here. And you would mount it down something like that. And you would just kind of glue it into place where you want it. I did it that way so you could kind of mix and match and do what you wanted to do. There's also some end caps in there. And all in all, I think it does a decent enough job. You can probably line several of these up and print them all together, you know, things like that, however you want to do it in your slicer. I did put these up on my Colts page. It's like I said, it's a fully modular system that you can just kind of assemble and do whatever you need to do with it. It does go up to the top. The original plan, these are hollow pieces. And the original plan was I was going to run all the electrical up into the AC ducts. And I was going to use the duct work to move it all the wires around. And that really just kind of turned out to be a lot of a pain. But it would work if you really wanted it to. Instead, I ended up doing holes through the, uh, the actual foam and running stuff around the outside. Speaking of which, so basically... There's a hole through here, there's a hole right there for the garage, and all those wires run around to the side. There's also some stuff down here for where the workbench is, and that comes up, and it's it's all channeled. So basically, all the foam, I cut these little grooves in, and I ran the wire into those grooves, and then I just taped over. That way, if I'm taking this to a show or something and it gets bumped or knocked, there's no fear of the wires getting caught and snagged and ripped out and things like that. Everything is nice and tucked inside the foam and covered over pretty flat and smooth. Uh, the, the duct tape on the top isn't pretty. It's not really meant to be. Again, it's just kind of there to make sure that things don't get snagged as little as possible. And all of our electrical fits down in that box in the back, like I said it would. So all of that is wrapped up. It is all tucked in. So that kind of covers the electrical stuff. So our workbench itself is done. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. These are a pain in the butt, but... They do open up so you could put stuff in there, whatnot. Uh, one of these is broken. I need to actually reprint this door, I guess, but this drawer is the pin broke on it. But these open up, stuff like that. The drawers come out. My wife was giving me all kinds of grief. She wants everything to open. She's like, your refrigerator should be made to open. There should be ice and stuff inside. I'm like, it's not a dollhouse. It's a diorama. Anyhow, they do not want to work, but they do, in fact, open up. So if I wanted to, I could position stuff open and have some tools in there. All that jazz. But There, you can see there. So I did add some magnets to these doors. I was having some trouble with them not wanting to stay closed so the magnets help to snap things into place so the whole workbench is designed by a, a designer named idea blend on Colts 3d everything except for this corner in the back I had to actually design the corner to make the to make it fit because I didn't want a big gaping hole there so I just basically designed it up to fill it something else that I did with the workbench. So the workbench itself comes as a bunch of modular pieces. You can buy the whole set or you can only buy individual ones, which is what I did because I only wanted a few of them. 
So I got the tall cabinets, I got the overhead cabinets, I got the lower section with seven drawers, the lower section with two drawers, I got the countertops, and then the legs. Now they have legs that have electrical sockets on them, but the designers I think are European, so the plugs that they have, they've got two different plug styles and they're not US plugs, they're some form of European plugs. So I went in and I 3D modeled up some U.S. electrical plugs. And I just printed up the base legs that didn't have the electrics on it. And I added my own. So I have a whole bunch more of the electric sockets. I've got some light switches as well, which I will be spreading out and putting in various places that I want them in. But that's just kind of a, a little added touch that I put on the, the workbench. If I were to have a workbench like this, I would have, I would really want to have a lot of electrical sockets. So that's what I did. You can kind of see where I sprayed some Tamiya's buff. Just really lightly modeled some buff on the top up there. As well as it's all over. I did the tops of the garage door. It's kind of all over the top of the AC. And the goal was kind of just to get like the look of some dust on top of the you know, video games, on top of the refrigerator. It doesn't really come in on the camera very well, but you can kind of see it a little bit. I thought that was kind of a nice add in there. We've got some other goodies in here as well. Got a toolbox. Um, I forget whether, I think Miguel from Hobby Works gave me the toolbox. Uh, various bits and pieces from Colts 3D. The air compressor comes from um, Motoboss. He does some great stuff. He's one of my favorite designers. Kind of added some electrical tape to simulate the belt back there. I added in some uh, 30 gauge wire and tried to make an end cap or a, a disconnect fitting for my hosing. Some jacks and jack stands, you know, just little odds and ends. Uh, I'm starting to work on the detailing, but you know I'm not getting a whole lot in there. That's what we're going to start doing next is adding in details. Uh, I'm looking at a bunch of posters and maybe some bands, some concert flyers and photos. I need to get... Oh, we have an espresso machine. I may have discussed the, just the espresso machine previously, but... I did a previous, a different espresso machine, and it was just too big, and so I did this smaller one, which looks really cool. But we need to get some whiskey bottles, various alcohol bottles on the bar counter in there. I've got some magazines that can go on the table. I may put some on the uh, workbench as well. You know, various odds and ends and little doodads to kind of, you know, give it some color and some life. Maybe some racing flags or pennants or something kind of around here. Kind of, you know, brighten things up and make it more, make it less sterile. So that's what we're going to start working on now. Now that we have all the, all the base structure stuff is done. Everything structural is finished, so now I can start doing tiny little minute details. Whew, that garage is hot. All right, guys, so that is a wrap for this video. No, it wasn't a huge update. You know, not a lot going on. Um, a lot of it is the garage and you know, just getting myself to actually focus. If I, if I would just focus, I would have the Mustang finished by now. It's got a get the ADHD and the, the scroll mode under control. So that's going to be it. Thanks for hanging out with me. I always appreciate you watching the videos. And I will catch you guys on the next one, which will hopefully be the finished Mustang build.